You can't recreate Christmas. Right. That's the experiment, right. you know. I agree with Carl. Listen, the dialogue, I practiced been in prison all my life. Never had any dialogue with the correctional officer there. Now, what Duke said, everybody in there was Caucasian. I grew up under segregation. Perhaps that's the way it happened in a white facility. But when I was in jail and in prison, never had that dialogue. My basic premise is you can't create prison. I look at fraud, have cock yellers. All these psychologists, uh, the subjects were Caucasians. The only one that had some blacks in it, and that was called Junk. So I'm looking at all that. Whatever your conclusion, it's going to be, you know, I don't agree with it. That's all I have to say. Well, can, we, can we hear from Dr. Zambardo? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The reason there were no minority other than the Asian. In 1971, there were very few African-American students in college. Mm. Uh, we put out an advertisement in the Palo Alto newspaper saying we wanted college students. 75 people applied, not one African-American. So that was, that was the group I chose from. I would have loved to have a, a, a more mixed. Uh, I grew up in the South Bronx. I grew up in a ghetto in the South Bronx. So most of, many of my friends were black or uh, Hispanic or Latino. And, and I know about many of my friends ended up in prison in Rikers Island as, as, as kids. Uh, uh, what, I know what would have happened if, if we had more uh, street kids. They would have kicked the guards' ass. There's nine prisoners and three guards. And at any one time, one of the guards had to go get food. So at any one time, there's nine prisoners and two guards. When it got really bad, instead of breaking down, they would have beat the shit out of the guards. Absolutely. Not one of our prisoners even thought about that. Because we, we, we bugged the cells, we could hear what they were saying. Yes. Nobody ever said, why don't we just jump the guards? Right. They were saying, how should we escape? They, right. were, they were spending their time planning how to escape, rather than right. say, it's nine of us and, three, and two or three of them. You know, but they never had the thought. Because they, these kids grew up, you know, with privilege that you don't physically beat up somebody. Okay. What was your so, intent so in doing it, though? Did you did you have any did you have any preconceived notions of what was going to happen? No, no. We simply wanted to show what happens when you put really good kids <coughs> in a really bad place. Mm -hmm. So you cannot recreate a prison in an experiment. But we did as close as as possible. We had the Palo Alto Police Department, you only see one scene there, arrest all the boys who are uh, going to be prisoners. Because we just said, wait at home, wait at the dorm. And a squad car comes, siren the railing, C cop comes, says, Billy Johnson, you're wanted for violation of Penal Code 459 PC, you, know, you have your right to remain silent, put your hands up, handcuffs them, puts them in a police car, Every neighbors are looking, brings them to the Palo Alto Police Department, um, fingerprints them, uh, takes photos, and puts them in a prison cell. You know, and so right away, this is really something powerful. And then we have an ex-convict, Carlo Prescott, who was my consultant, who had been in San Quentin prison uh, and also Vacaville prison in California for 17 years, on and off, since he was a kid. And his parole, was, his parole request was denied 16. He, I put him in charge of the parole board. You know, and so, and then I, on parole board we had secretaries and other people. We had parents come down. We had prison chaplain. So I try to reproduce the elements that would be in a real prison, knowing that in a, you can't ever create, really create a real prison. So this is as close as could be. And in fact, as you saw, day after day, these kids were breaking down. 
And he says in the film too, he says these kids, these kids, you know, get punched in the my, my question is, what happened to you? Oh, I changed. I became a prison superintendent. I became yeah, a hard ass. Yeah, what happened? Where? Because Where you, you seem to become part of yeah, I did. the experiment. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I've written about it, something I'm ashamed of. Uh, okay, see, the problem was all other research in psychology is usually one hour. Have students come into an experiment and you do something for one hour. This was students living, if you're a prisoner, you live there 24 hours a day, day after day, and the guards work eight hour shifts. There was eight hours in the morning, afternoon, and evening. And, and so, and I, I was there all the time. I slept upstairs on a couch in my office. And so I was physically always there. And I made the mistake of not only being the researcher in charge, but I chose to be the prison superintendent because everybody had to have a role. So one of the students was the warden, prison superintendent. And the problem was over time, I began to think like a prison superintendent. What does that mean? You care more about the guards than the prisoners. You care more about your institution than anything else. And so when there's a problem, you know, the, I side with the guards rather than the prison. So I saw the suffering. I saw kids breaking down. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did I do as superintendent? I said, we need a replacement. Was it accurate with the, the most moving, well not, one of the most moving things when the young man at the end says, I lost my whole identity. Was yeah. that an accurate reflection of what happened that somebody said? Yeah, I mean, many of them lost. That's what I think the movie's about is that they lost who they were. Yeah. No, I mean, so did he? No, I mean, everything that was said in the movie was, was actually what kids said. Uh, yeah, those final interviews are real. You yeah, recreated those you final interviews. They're real. You can see them on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, they're real interviews. Yeah. What do you think would have happened if you had set out to create a utopia instead of a dystopia? <laughs> no, no. Well, Same thing. No, it's a good... no, it could have been. I'm saying everybody there is a good guy. I mean, what I mean is uh, 75 people answered the ad, and we gave them interviews. Uh, we gave them personality tests. We picked only people who were normal, healthy. These are intelligent college students. Now, I should mention, they were from all over the America, not Stanford students. They were finishing summer school, and they needed 15 bucks. That's why they were not interested in prison. They were interested. And so the idea was, if you have a prison where everybody's good, don't they change the, the prison to make it a good place? I don't think so. I think the nature of prison, even though these kids never, never knew anything about prison, to be a prison guard means you have power. Well, you set up a reality, a very specific reality. Yeah. Then you put these people in it. Right. Those people bought into the reality. Right. So their psychology accepted that reality. Right. As a result... Their psychology created it in their it mind. It created it and accepted it. Right. Right. Because you set up the guidelines. Right. Right. Now, my question before was, you set up a dystopia, a prison right. environment. Right. What if you had set up a utopia okay. where, you, where everyone behaved perfectly? Yeah. Do you think they would have taken on aspects of that? I think so, yeah. This is, this yeah. is compassion oh. training. No, I just want to... Yes, yeah, there's a critique that yeah. I read. I read uh, okay, the whole then. thing, but it's a particular critique that I wanted to respond. Okay. It says the study has been criticized for the man characteristics by psychologist Peter Gray. He argues that participants in psychological experiments are more likely to do what they believe the researchers want them to do. The guards were essentially told to be cruel. However, it was precisely this willingness to comply with the experimenter's questionable practices that showed how little was needed for the students to engage in such practices. What, what's, what's your response? It's, it's wrong. We never said we wanted you to be cruel. We said we wanted you to be a guard. You know, so that's, that's a lie. I mean, nowhere, no, I mean, everything we did is on videotapes, I should mention that at Stanford University in the archives, I gave them everything from the study, all the videos, all the reports, all the letters, and, and anybody can have access to it. So, so everything I've done is for public consumption. So essentially, just the opposite, the main thing I say, as, as the actor here says, is you cannot use physical force. You cannot, you cannot harm the prisoners. If you touch them with your billy club, touch, it's symbolic as hitting. If you hit a prisoner, you will be replaced. So, but I did not stop psychological violence. And that's what you got to see. The guards, 
automatically began to use psychological humiliation, degradation, and that's what you see. And it got worse and worse. Each day, a little more extreme, a little... I mean, these are normal kids having an emotional breakdown, screaming, as you heard. And in each day, another prisoner broke down. So in two weeks, what you, th what you thought would have happened if the whole thing went two weeks? Looking at it, I'm, I'm thinking most of them would have killed each other. Um, Did they recuperate? Oh, oh yeah, yeah no, they said, they shut on the phone. No, no, I mean, I, I shouldn't well, say just suicide. Say, I, no, no, I, no I, I, I think other, more prisons would have broke down and we would not have enough people to keep the thing going. Uh, I'm so happy I ended it, but I should have. See, had I not been prison superintendent, had I been the researcher in charge, I would have ended it when the second prisoner broke down. We proved the point. That is, here's how situations can overwhelm good human nature. But at that point, a prisoner breaks down, I look at my list, let's replace him with somebody who's standing by. So he breaks down, let's replace him. So what was happening for you at the point when you stopped it? What clicked for you? Because your, your girlfriend said, she's yeah. out of here. Yeah, so they, no, that, that's your ridiculous. consultant said, look. That was scary. That the consultant said, I, I was starting to enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing. I mean, um, so, so again, I mean, we only have a little piece in the movie about Carlo Prescott. As I said, he's a dear friend of mine. He was, he was a consultant, you know, uh, on the experiment. And when he's playing the role of, of um, the parole officer, what he does, he humiliates the prisoners. I mean, he, he makes some of them are in tears. And afterwards, he said he got physically sick. He said he became while playing the role, the worst parole officer that he ever faced, or a combination of them. He would tell this Asian kid, you know, we don't have many of your people, and so he'd make it up. Uh, you see, he has like a blank piece of paper, mm -hmm. uh, and he's making it up on the spot. He was very verb, he is very verb. And he said, we don't have many of your kind here. You're a disgrace to your race. You know, what are you, uh, what are you gonna do uh, when, when we release you, if we ever do? He says, I want to be a teacher. He said, I would never have my kids, you know, uh, be a, a teacher, have you be a teacher of them. And the kid, the, the kid is crying. And this is an experiment, and Carlo knows it. I consulted with him before the beginning. And so he, even there, he, he's playing the role of parole officer. He becomes that guy. I'm saying, I play the role of, of a, a prison superintendent. I become that. So that's the point of the study is, in life, many of us play roles. I mean, you're a manager, you're a boss, you're a husband, you know, whatever it is. And that's not who you are. That's, you know, I'm a teacher. No, I'm not Phil, I'm Phil Zimbardo, I'm a kid from the Bronx. But now in my teacher role, I have power. What power I have? I can give you a D, I can fail you. I can humiliate you, I can not write a letter of recommendation. And so, given that power, people are gonna suck up to me. And I can easily misuse that power, or I can say, no, that's not who I am. If you work hard, if it's fair and square, you know, I treat everybody the same, doesn't matter your race, religion, background, whatever. Um, but essentially, it's really how easy we slip into the role. And what do the kids say? You know, see, the, the, guards, the guards worked eight hours. During the day, they did all kind of, they came in, they say, you put on the uniform, you put on the sunglasses, uh, uh, you get the billy club, you step out on the yard, and you're a guard. And you look around, and there's two other guards, and you nod to each other. This is our place. And our job is to make the prisoners know that they are worthless. And the prisoners know that if they rebel, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be finished. Now again, in a real prison, guards have guns. In the extreme, they, you know, they, they shoot you, they kill you. Uh, what was your criteria for choosing a guard or a prisoner? No, no, it's random. So, so of the 75, yeah. I'm going to let him talk. We've got about five questions. No, no. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. Wait, that's a separate question. Can we call on him? We'll get you there. Hold on, Mike. Dale, go ahead. Excuse me. I'm Dale. Yeah, thanks. I see. I thank you for coming. I definitely see you fell into the role of Ward and Ed quite well. But now, when I watch your film, at the end, the credits, or at the end, it said that. None of the participants were harmed by your experiment. We actually, yeah, we, you know, it's you actually believe that yeah. today yeah. after. Yeah. In fact, in fact, yeah. actually, some of them, and this is an interesting thing, I've learned coming I'm into this. Yeah, I, I directed the film, and so I've, I've learned about a lot of this, not, not just a few years ago when I first got involved in the project. And what's interesting is that they did extensive follow-up. I mean, incredibly responsible follow-up. Like, whatever 
things that, you know, as Phil talks about the experiment before, that they followed up in a way and ended it in a way that was very sound. I mean, the movie begins and ends with the experiment only they those six days. They get paid the two weeks or only the six days? Oh, yeah, two weeks. Yeah. But, yeah, they were paid the two weeks. And, and I think what, and what was interesting is to say that as quickly as they, they fell into these roles, they were able to nearly as quickly transition back into the people that they were. Yeah. And, it's, and, 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 many, and many of them had affected their lives in positive ways. A lot of them went on to study psychology. A lot of them went on to become, uh, you know, prison therapists, prison psychologists. Uh, you know, a lot of them got involved in this kind of work in, in a positive capacity. I can understand that argument. I myself have served over 20 years in prison, and I agree to an extent to that, but I'm, I assure you that I am scarred for life. Oh, I, that, you have to understand, we're only, saying this, we're only saying that for these, like someone said, you can't create a prison. We're not, the film isn't saying, oh, for if you came, went to a real prison, you wouldn't be, by no means. I think what it's trying to say, in the context of this experiment, and this, the artifice that was created, and the real experience, emotional experience they felt from that artifice, is, is, is of course, uh, entirely different than what it would be to, 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 serve, to serve that kind of time, to be in a real institution, as opposed to the basement of the college. No, let, let me ask it in a different way. So, one of the most interesting things, so it's a little experiment done at Stanford. We finished, you know, I'm going to write an article and put it to bed. I'm going to do other things. The next day at San Quentin, which is um, uh, an hour and a half away from Stanford, near San Francisco, uh, 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 George Jackson, African-American prisoner, soul brother, is murdered by the guards in an alleged escape attempt. Uh, and um, and uh, what clearly had, was, was very confusing. It looks like he was set up by the guard, but he, he does come. He does get keys. And he, he he opens all the cells in solitary confinement. Uh, and in solitary confinement, as you know, are the informants. Uh, they keep there for safety. And there were six six of his brothers. And they kill the informants. And they kill some guards. Uh, and he gets shot, supposedly climbing a 30 foot wall in the daytime. That doesn't make sense. Three, three weeks later, at Attica Prison in New York, the prisoners there also riot in support of George Jackson's murder. Uh, and if you know, the Attica riot lasted a full month, uh, where the prisoners took over the prison for a full month. Yes, what you were talking about. Why? No, 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 it was a month. I was in that. No, no, you're wrong. I'm sorry. It, it, it didn't last four days. The Attica riot, taking over the prison, I mean, no, it was from the 9th to the 13th, honestly. Okay, you may be right. I don't think so. But, but the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, mean, I was one of the observers in the Attic of Yeah, well, I wonder where you think this information comes from. I'm sort of like trying, I'm, I'm going to twist this over a little bit. Because uh, this is just in the, in the field of psychology, uh, which you work yeah. in. What is the relationship between your work and the work of Dr. Mengele in Germany, and 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 and, 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 it's, and the study of phenology. What is how, how did that pan out? Uh, that question is insulting. Do you realize that? Absolutely. Do you realize what you said is insulting to me? Do you know who Dr. Mengele is? He made experiments on people to see. What he sent Jews to their death in concentration camp in Auschwitz. He made experiments on people to see what they, their, their, their uh, ability to endure torture and pain. I think we're going to end that conversation. It's Please. Not only yeah. Please. Any other questions? I didn't mean to insult Please. you. I'm, I, 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 he did. Well, yeah, you we did. have a lot of problems there. Okay. So, so, next so, question. That's like a... Yes, it's an answer. It's insulting. We're not even going to... Wait a minute. Next. Ask your question. Yeah. It seems the most obvious takeaway from the experiment <clears> is that people will abuse their power. What about the uh, the other the the the, the, the under empowered the, the why did why did the, the prisoners not fight back or, or you know that see that's the wonderful question because that's about oppression I mean so, so the study is really a metaphor of life it's a metaphor you put people in power and do they abuse it not all of them did on every shift one of the guards uh, took the extreme position. And on every shift, there was always one guard who didn't do anything bad, but he never stopped the, the evil guards. Uh, and so it's a metaphor of how easy it is for people to turn to power. But in, on the other hand, the prisoners never unified. 
Now, whether or not they attacked the guards, they never gave each other support. So when prisoners are breaking down, there's no evidence any, any, any of the guys in their cells said, hey, buddy, come on, pull it together. You know, we're all in this thing. You know, once somebody breaks down, they just abandon him. So essentially, it's how do you train people to deal with oppression, oppression of racism, oppression of sexism. And so that's, that's again, one of the positive messages that I think come out of this. And I do have a question back to Thank you for coming. Thank you. I got a lot out of the, of the film because it was just like, I was sitting there with my feelings. And I, would, and I agree with um, Dale, um, my name is Mo, and I agree with Dale because like for, for a minute there, you know, like you seem, if you had actually been in prison, you seem to like forget about it. But then mm -hmm. right there I sat there and I realized that I haven't forgot about it. All the stuff that happened would just like trigger something in me. Wow. And, and I got a knot in my throat and my tears came out because it was just like, wow, I remember those days where they were just waking you up and just, you know, and it didn't matter. You were standing there in your underwear and stuff like that. And then it didn't matter if you had to wake up early to work, you know, um, going to the bathroom in buckets and certain things that just like kicked up, you know, and it was just like, wow, like to tell myself, like I haven't got through this and I thought so you know what, and I had to sit down with myself and kind of like analyze myself like, wow, man, I really haven't been through this. So it had, it had an effect on me, okay. I mean, you know, and I've seen it because sometimes you're like, it's still like in, in the back of your mind, you know, and your subconscious is there, you know, and what Dale was talking about as far as like, it had to have some effect on the people. Not saying that, you know, you can say, you can act like, oh, I'm all right, you know what I'm saying? Because most of us, like, for myself, I, act, I look at the fun parts, because there was fun parts, but then you look at parts that you were like, you really, like, have something like this that it triggers you, and it's like, wow. Oh, that's just emotional. Yeah, go ahead. Question here, question yeah, here. I'm sorry. This gentleman had his hand up a long time, and there, and then there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Doctor, what was? Sure. And your name? My name's Kyle. Um, what was the turning point for you um, in in reality that made you say, you know what, I'm going to shut it down? What was there any specific event? Yeah. Or yeah, uh, the event um, was was on Thursday night. Uh, uh, my girlfriend who had. Had, had been my student, and now we just started living together at a show at the beginning, and we were thinking of getting married. Uh, she was a psychologist, and she was working in the library, uh, and uh, I told her, you know, why don't you come down 10 o'clock, we'll go out to dinner, because I had, I'd been living in, the, in this, this prison thing. So she comes down at 10 o'clock, it's a toilet run. So, what she, so we're looking at the monitor, and I look up, and I, 10 o'clock toilet run. She looks up and she starts tearing. I said, what's wrong with you? Here's the power of the situation. Nobody's seen this. I'm giving all this, you know, it's so important. And she said, I can't look. And she runs out. And I'm confused. I run out and we're outside. And we're having this big argument. And I'm saying, you know, what kind of psychologist are you? No, this is human nature and the law. Da, da, da. She said, stop. They're not prisoners. And they still remember. They're not prisoners. They're not guards. They're boys. And you are responsible. And they're suffering. And I takes me back. I say, but wait a minute, I'm still defending my prison. And then she says, how could you not see what I see? These are boys suffering. You know, you know, she said, and then she says, she knows me for many years. And, and I have a reputation of being a loving, caring professor. My classes have thousands of students sign up. And she said, I said, you have changed. The situation has changed you. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? And she said, if this is the real you, I no longer want to have a romantic relationship with you. Mm. And she starts walking away. And that was, <gasps> I said, oh my God, you're right. Because the transformation in me, I was unaware of, because it didn't happen. Did you this. I married her the next year, of course. <laughs> no, so, so, They're still married. <laughs> no, so, 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 so the point was, at that moment, I said, okay, it's not 11 o'clock at night. I said, okay, I've got to end it tomorrow, but how do you... So we went to have dinner, figuring out, you got, you got to bring all the prisoners in who broke down, all the guards on all the shifts, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's how it ended. Kyle chose not to use that as the ending, he had the confrontation, because it's, it's a powerful 
but you don't have that last scene. And the last scene is actually what actually happened. So after I said I'll end it, when I went back down, that's what I saw the monitor. That you know, I had already decided to end it, but then at that point the guards have, have lost it. So it's 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 both. Uh, you saw yeah. some on playback, right? You saw yeah. some yeah. from the night. Yeah, the timeline was was a little different. It, it went over, it went over. There was more. There was the decision came at a different time, and yeah. it was one of the things where we never changed anything. But we didn't change any of the, the realities of what happened. We just sort of put them in different places right. and, and heightened the dramatic the happened. drama of the moment of when he says this has to be done. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of tried to bring that more to the, to the front foreground. Yeah. You, yeah. you have a question, then Kaz in the back, and then you, and then that. Okay, uh, come in. Yeah. Oh, wow. This means it's all over? No, no. One, one, three, but no, we do those three. Yeah. All right, one, two, three. Okay, one. That's no, really interesting for me. Yeah, my name is Arshia. Uh, I'm a volunteer in the lab at media uh, lab also. Uh, basically, what really I was so much impressed with was the way each participants play their role. Okay, most people that we are asking questions, we are so have their, all their emotions attached to the event that happened, either because of the experience that they had in the past. Mm -hmm. But I was really very impressed how they were able to act their roles, you know, so well that even though, you know. You know, it, it is called an experiment, but it has a whole lot of, you know, uh, natural tendencies, you know, well motivated wow. art, you know, played on, on each role. Okay, if I were to make a selection of those participants, I think it would be an extensive interview involved, you know, first of all, I have to know what your interests are. If you are fascinated with this kind of, you know, attitude or whatever, you know, but to sell, to make a selection at random, mm -hmm. with this participant, each played a really highly particip, you know, a fascinating role. Right. I, I, I was really touched by it. You What's know, I, I, my, 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 my question is that I give credit to all the all the participants that played that role. You know, whether it's really affected, uh, affected their, their life, you know, it's not a point. Thank you. Well, well, let, 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 let me have an answer. Yeah, well, well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, yeah, there's only my I'll see, it's, it's, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, you, you know, it's, it, there's, the, the, it, the thing that I can speak about a little bit to what you said is that, you know, and, and we were saying this earlier, is this, this was six days. You know, we made a two-hour film. And, you know, a lot of what you have to do there, that's where sort of, Storytelling comes into play, right? You you say, okay, well, you don't just say, I'm going to show you this scene that happened or this event that happened. I'm only going to sh I'm going to point the camera at this one part of it, even. So, you know, a lot of what my job is is to spend spend a lot of time in the film, read everything there was to read about this experiment, and and narrow it down and narrow it down and say, okay, these are the parts of the way to try to tell in two hours, tell the most effective thing. So yeah, it's 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 about trying to show each individual person in a way that. Even the guys who will only speak a few times in the film, you can hopefully kind of understand who they are. Did a great job. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. And then Kaz is the last question. You, so, uh, uh, you talked about the. Uh, you, your name? Oh, sorry, Richard. Yeah. yeah. You talked about human nature becoming overwhelmed by the nature of the prison system, the system, the structures, the processes, right. and that, that essentially leading to abuse of power or authority. So what I'm curious about is how the system, structures, and processes, say, of the United States, for example. Right, the, con the, the, the economic system, whatever, whatever you want to look at there, the, the system structures and processes in the United States, yeah. how that leads to abuse of power, right. and, and what we can do about that. Yeah, so, so again, I wrote a book called The Lucifer Effect, uh, and I hope you can get it here, I get my publisher to give some copies, in which I'd say, uh, what we're looking at is individuals who come in with a certain background, mm -hmm. we're going to put them in a situation, a bad barrel, but the question is, who makes the bad barrel? And that's called the system. So essentially, right now in America, two million American citizens are in prison. I do a lot of work in Europe. It's an embarrassment. People always say, oh, tell us about your prison system. You come to America, so it's great. Two million, and even more are on the <coughs> and so forth and so on. Taxpayers are paying billions of dollars. There's no evidence that prisons rehabilitate. In fact, they punish. And, and there's, no, there's no effort to change the situation to make it better. 
Uh, I've tried, they don't want outsiders. I mean, I went to the head of corrections in California after I did this study, and I said, me and my students would like to work with your guards, you know, to try to work to promote, you know, compassion, uh, have a new system where uh, every guard gets assigned a certain number of prisoners, and for every day they leave earlier than their sentence, the guard gets a reward. So it's a reason for guards to want prisoners to get out rather than to keep them in longer. He said, you know, thanks very much. You know. See you later. Yeah. Casimiro, last question. Who are you? Identify yourself. I didn't get the last What are you doing? I'm Casimiro Torres. I'm the superintendent here. Okay. I'm almost a case act. I did a case manager and stuff like that. Right. I actually started you in school. Right. And I want to thank you for being here. I know this can be not always the easiest thing to do, and I appreciate that. I respect that. I want to make an observation and uh, pose a question. Um, I know you said that at, at what point you shut it down uh, with the discussion and the reaction from your girlfriend. I just find that um, it, it struck me that that seems to be a great part of society, um, how they look at it. They don't really, they're so disassociated from it and the way they look at people who are incarcerated or detained for whatever reason. And at some point, some people hit the point that you did and they make a change in the way they think about it. That's just an observation I'm making. The question is, um, you know, do you feel this was a success in terms of what you wanted to get out of it? And would you attempt to do something like this again? It would be. No, I mean, I mean that, that's a different no, world. No, I, I would. You couldn't do it now. I mean, this study can never be done again. But the curious thing is, I would ask myself, what would happen if you redid the study with only women? Women guards were in prisons. What would you do if you redid the study if you had only African Americans? That's guards and prisoners. So these are really curious things. What would happen if you trained the guards before in compassion, in insight therapy, whatever? You know, could, could you train out the power motive? So these are things I would love to know about, and, I, and we will never know, because you can't, you can't even ask those questions. You can never do this kind of research. Uh, so I'm not sorry I did it, because I think the, the message is important. It's, I'm, you know, it, it's never been done in this way. That's why 40, 44 years later, you know, it's, it's going to be a, this, hopefully this uh, well-received movie. Um, but, but really you want everybody to watch this and say, what kind of guard would I have been? Would I have been such an asshole as these guys? Would I have been a good guard? Would I have stopped them? What kind of prisoner? Would I have been, you know, build prisoner solidarity? Or would I, would I have been one of the kids who break down? What about if you were me? When would you have ended the study? Or would you have somebody as my backup to say, hey, buddy, you're losing it? You know, so I had no, because everybody, all the, my graduate students were my, like my kids. They're not going to tell, hey, dad, you know, you're losing. So I, I needed a, a, an ally at some point, an ombudsman who said, hey, we've got to blow the whistle. This thing is out of control. So it wouldn't have to be this woman telling me I'm, I'm going to break off, break off our relationship. Well, so I was going to say, I was gonna say to add to that really fast, too. I think what's important about what Dr. Zimbardo is saying, and something that's been really fascinating for me to learn along the way, is that I believe his legacy is in so much as is the experiment, in so much as it is what he did with what came of the experiment. You know, so you talk about, oh, well, was it worth it? Well, it was because he made it worth it. He has written about compassion, about understanding, about uh, rehabilitation over over punishment. You know, he, these are the things that he's dedicated the rest of his life to since his experiment. And so for me, that's. To me, I, I'm not a psychologist. I don't understand the scientific method. I mean, only what I learned in elementary school. You know, so for me, it's it's about saying, oh, well, how does how does someone take the, you know, and that's what I wanted the film to do is is to show those six days and hopefully lead people to the book and the documentary and the materials and the things that have come from it. Let us thank you, approach. No, no, let me ask one last thing again to answer your question about utopia. I have in fact created in San Francisco a nonprofit foundation called the Heroic Imagination Project. How do you teach young people to stand up, speak out, and challenge evil of all kinds? Yes. And we have a training program for young people, and now we're trying to move it to, to, in schools and corporations, which is free. And so if you go on our website, heroicimagination.org, we have lots of, lots of uh, ideas about uh, how we can change schools. To, to provoke cooperation, to promote compassion. Teach empathy, compassion. Wow. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Right, because I think for, for me, well, first of all, thank you. For me, the, the lesson in all this is what Barry asked at the very beginning is that what if we had a system 
where people weren't seen as numbers, people weren't seen as bad and evil people. People were held accountable, but held accountable in a way that builds people up. Because the lesson that is demonstrated there is that when you create the environment, people adapt to that yes. environment. Be yeah. in a position of yeah. power, be in a position of, 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 mm -hmm. of not having power. People adapt to that. So sure. if we created a system that built people up, and strengthen people and seeing people as valuable pieces of society, what would that system look like? That's so the so that's the that's the yep, real that's lesson. I gotta tell you, I was pissed off at you watching this. So you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. I, my, my comment is that one, I think it's a, it's an uncompromising and brilliantly made film and probably yes. not commercial because it is <laughs> And secondly, in contrast to Carl to Duke's response, I think part of the fact that it's all white college kids and watching them transition is even makes it more powerful because it shows you what the system can do to people who haven't even been touched by, by it and that they become just yeah. like what we what we see in the bad movies and that and that uh, I don't know if this is the best audience of the film that the, I don't and I don't know if you reach the audience that has to see it which is people to see what the prison does to change well, just like and they think it, yeah, yeah. just like the neighborhoods do to kids just that like kid the end I put on my identity is, yeah. the, is, yeah. is really what it's about it's and so I thank you the funders of this the office of naval intelligence they weren't interested in any of it they were looking at cognitive infiltration how do you erase a human being from the inside out mm -hmm. they're the people that brought us MK Ultra and all that good stuff. So Thank you all. they didn't care about none of that stuff. Not to not to denigrate anything that was done, but the, the source, the, the people that funded this, they wanted to. You saw what happened in Abu Ghraib. Right. This is the stuff that they invested. Mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's like two shoots. Right. Well, this is going. Thank you all for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.